Sound check, one, two, one, two. Welcome in to another SR51 Media Stream. I am your host, Salt Aries. Hopefully your day has been going well. If it hasn't, hopefully it turns around for you. I want to welcome you back in to another SR51 Media Stream. I am your current host, Salt Aries. Normally I'm the host of all these streams. Uh, I'm normally the one that runs the streams and runs the social media. So if you saw any of my tweets or you saw any of my TikToks, Saw any of my Facebooks. Greatly appreciate it. Um, just wanted to run down a couple things I saw in the news. So one of the things I saw today was that the gaming awards came out. Um, I'm not going to be making a very long type of video or, you know, something different about it. Um, I may make a short video, something where I just kind of touch on the issue about, you know, um, basic, excuse me, I just touch on the issue in the sense of, hey, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a gamer, right? And when I look at sports, best sports game of the year, I don't understand. I had a reaction, I had an interaction today, and just to explain how it happened. So basically, I put out a tweet where I said, um, I don't understand how, let me pull up the tweet. So I'm giving you the right information here. Um... Uh, hold on, pulling it up now. I said, uh, uh, I tweet a lot during the day. Okay, here it is. I said, how does Madden 22 and NBA 2K22 not make it for the nomination for sports title of the year? Frankly, it's the clearly, frankly, it's clearly the best ones of the year. Basically, every year, I have to disagree with this one. Then I put an emoji that said. I think um, that's some bullshit. So this woman, um, I don't really know who she is. I got a screenshot of the tweet, and I'm going to file it as, you know, under receipts and stuff. But basically, she started talking about how I don't understand why they would, uh, I don't understand why they would vote them in. They're trash anyway. And um, they're ass and trash anyway, right? Now, a lot of times, people will do that just to get, you know, sort of like a rise. You see what I'm saying? They will say something wild online to get me to react and say something back. And then before you know it, you know, we have this back and forth and now people see your channel. That's not something I do. I'm not, I'm not a clout chaser and I'm not looking for people to mountain climb off of my back. You see what I'm saying? But the greater issue is there that Madden and 2K basically didn't even make it for nomination, excuse me, nomination 
of best game of the year. And I don't understand how that happened to myself. I feel as though, um, and I also have decided that, <clears throat> just to let you know live here, of course, I break things live. So the reviews this year and going forward will be done in video format. I will no longer probably be doing written reviews just because I feel as though that um, we're a video people. Uh, what I had, the reason why they've been taking a while is because I, I wanted to know what direction I was going in. I didn't want to write a review for Madden and then do a video review for 2K. So basically all the videos are going to be coming, I mean videos, all the reviews are going to be coming in video fashion. Um, I'm still thinking about whether or not I'm going to put a 10, pers a 10 player count where it says um, like 1 to 10, like, you know, how, how good a game, I think the game is between 1 and 10. I haven't decided that yet um, because a lot of times you can repeat yourself. Uh, uh, you know, I think what I would focus in on myself is more good, bad, and meh, you know, something like that. Like I'm going to come up with some sort of uh, phrases and stuff like that. I'm not just going to pick 1 through 10. I think everybody does 1 through 10. So the reason why I was saying that was because I feel as though it's better to bring the podcast. I'm um, not the podcast. It's better to bring, and I can load up the franchise window too, so you can see where we are. It's better to bring. Um, it's better to bring the po uh, reviews to YouTube because of the fact that what I feel happens is that you're in a better position for um, you to absorb all of the content. You know, you don't have to go somewhere different for videos or content and stuff like that. As far as the reviews, uh, like I was saying, I, I don't know how many hours I have in the Madden. I think I have like two or three days, something like that. I could It could be shorter. It could be longer. Um, I know I have a good amount of time in 2K, so I feel comfortable writing these reviews. I know also, just to kind of put this out there, I know everybody named Mama right now is playing Halo, and I understand that everybody is playing Halo. But this kind of goes back to, I hear a lot of people now, you know, across podcasts and different streams talking about, you know, how long they've been with Xbox and, and how they came over from PlayStation 2 or they came over from PlayStation 3. Myself, I've been with Xbox since day one. I still have my original Xbox sitting not even five feet from me, you know. And the thing about it is, it's not to like clout chase or to say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a deeper gamer. I love Xbox more than you. Like, no, that's not what it is. I'm just basically saying that I've been here since Xbox One, so you have to understand that I've played Spider-Man games, I've played a lot of games, and what made me stick was the sports games and games like Saints Row. That's why, for me, I already know by the time Saints Row comes out, and I think I want to say March, by the time Saints Row comes out in March, I would have had probably already won a Super Bowl here, been working on a ring in 2K and be settled enough to say, okay, I'm willing to jump into this game. Same thing with WWE 2K. I'm praying that it has a good story, you know? Like, you keep hope alive that this one has a good story because I'm not going to lie, the last one's story was trash juice, you know, not because it has nothing to do with it being a female lead. It was because we were doing dumb stuff. Like, I wanted to wrestle, I wanted to wrestle... Goldberg and Triple H and Undertaker and they sit up here talking about let's get into a dance contest and let's let's have a uh, let's have a dance contest and let's 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 wrestle the hot dog man and I'm like come on man this stuff is stupid you know so basically I'm glad they took off this year and they didn't make a 2K for the earlier 21 I'm glad that they're making a WWE 2K 22 um, if I had to say anything I think that game gonna be fire because now that there's an AEW game that's coming out too. They can't afford a mess. Like, they can't afford a game that comes out and is buggy and it's, you know, it's a glitchy mess because the first thing that most, what what most people don't believe, but what would happen is, especially with kids, you know, because that's where the majority of their, their base is going to come from is adults mixed in with kids. And adults are finicky. You know, if you give us a buggy, glitched out game, then basically, you know, we're going to return it and we're not going to buy it. We might... Some people be so pissed where they're not even watching WWE, now they're watching AEW. Kids are even less finicky. I mean, I shouldn't say less, even more finicky. They're the types where if they get a game and a game, if their friends like AEW more, if they feel as though, let's say the AEW game has uh, blood, or let's say it has uh, matches that WWE doesn't have, then they're going over there, you know? So for me, I know when WWE 2K comes out, I know that I'm going to put in a good amount of hours. Um, hopefully, like I said, fingers crossed, praying to the Lord here, 
that it's a good story. I don't really want to um, have to do anything too wild. Let's just keep it simple, you know. How about we just wrestle for belts? You know, I thought that's what wrestling was about, you know. And then I think also with them making this 2K that we just that I just purchased, I think they really are going to come with something that nobody's expecting because when you look at 2K, nobody expected 2K to be a whole global world. That's why I'm not racing uh, 2K or Madden. Like, I'm just playing it in a, in a fashion that I like playing it. And, um, yeah, basically, so those two games – WWE 2K22 and and Saints Row are two games. I well, I know Saints Row. I'm gonna love it because I'm a Saints Row fan and I love everything Saints Row. So I'm gonna you know unless it's the only way I don't love Saints Row is if like if it's a buggy glitched out mess and you can't play it and and, and you know all this other stuff doesn't work, which I highly doubt that it will be. So you know Saints Row will probably be the stuff. Um, as far as between Battlefield, between Battlefield and Halo, um, I missed the window for. Uh, what's the name of that thing? I missed the window for Halo's, Halo. I missed the window for Battlefield's pre-order, but just to warn you, because I keep it 100, I, you know, I always keep it 100 with you guys and gals. I never sit up here and, you know, tell you something different. I am repeat, um, excuse me. I am reading reports of Battlefield having some issues. Now people are trying to make this. Yeah, I'm streaming today. I'm going to be um, playing the game in about a minute, just going over some topics. Hey, how you doing? Also, Pang Studio, how, how's your day going? Um, so, also, just to let you know, I'm just basically cruising over some topics, and then I'm going to be firing up some games. Um, so, yeah, there are some reports coming out from Battlefield that, essentially, Battlefield has some issues. Now, I know when you read into it, what you're going to find out is there are some people that are trying to make this into a console thing, like Xbox this, PlayStation this. This is how I look at it. If Battlefield's having issues right now, it depends on what the issues are. I'm not very averse to every issue that's going on in the game. When I played the beta, the beta played pretty well. Um, there was nothing really major. I mean, I like the fact that it's a shooter, and right now we're kind of starved for first-person shooters, you know, massive first-person shooters. So I wanted to get it just for that fact, but I have to be cautious on these sorts of games because I got burnt before with like I got burnt last year with Cyberpunk 2077. It was a good game, but it was a very very glitchy type of bugged out game. And WWE 2K20, I got burnt there. You know the story was like I said just a couple minutes ago was hot trash juice. So you know um, I may hold off a little bit on Battlefield, seeing as how Halo is out. Um, when you need a couple matches, you can just get those matches in Halo. Uh, I'm more looking for WWE 2K and, and Saints Row, but I'm not going to rule out Battlefield because I feel like a lot of times if I don't get it now, closer to Black Friday or closer to the holidays, I can probably get it for basically half, if not half. So probably be waiting until we get around there. Now to jump into where we are with the game. So there's some good news and some bad news. So there's the good news is we're undefeated. The bad news is we missed the window for Miles Jack. So yesterday, if you didn't read our tweets, which you if you didn't read my tweets, which you should have, um, that's why I keep everybody updated. Uh, there was a power outage in my area because there was like a rainstorm that came through and it was like massively bad. So it knocked the power out and the power didn't come back till like later at night. So I chose not to do a stream because it was already late at night. And normally I don't stream that, you know, that far late into the night and stuff like that. So I chose just not to stream, but I did get in some time later uh, last night in some games. Uh, I ended up playing uh, the Cowboys, another team before them. And then basically I ended up going undefeated eight. No, but what happened was they asked me do um, the miles Jack question. They asked me um, miles Jack. I said, Hey, uh, if you can win this game, then basically he'll go up to an X-Factor. And we had to hold the Texans to 150 yards total offense. And I blew it in the end. I had it. It was the fourth quarter. It was over. All I had to do was take a couple knees, and I had the game. But I, I tried to go for more points, and I ended up punting the ball away or something like that. And then they got the ball, and they ended up uh, throwing a deep pass downfield and getting like 70 yards, and I just missed the window. I felt hella bad about it. You know, I really wanted to get Miles' update, but hopefully he upgrades in general. Um, hopefully he just, you know, upgrades on his own and stuff like that. It's not one of those things where he misses his upgrade. So we beat the Texans. Um, <clears throat> what I wanted to do was take a look at this roster and make sure that we're set because, if I'm not mistaken, we're in week eight right now. So basically, 
we can't trade for anybody else. There's this is it. So I just want to make sure everybody's locked and loaded for the season. Uh, we got a good amount of wide receivers, and it's only only three or four, three or four wide receivers could take the field anyway. So we got a good amount of wide receivers. Tight ends looking nice. The line brought in some, and same thing with this line too. To tell you if you're playing franchise, sometimes it seems like you don't need like two and three guys at different positions. That is a lie. As soon as you get into the playoffs, you get close to the playoffs, it'll be running good. Three line. I I had. Three linemen get hurt. I had Brandon. Where is he? There he is right there. He's still hurt. Our center got hurt. Our right guard, oh, excuse me, right guard. <laughs> Our right guard got hurt. And Lane Johnson still down. He's still hurt. All three of these guys got hurt. So all the backups, you know, all these guys I got playing behind them, the young youth. I went out and got Penny Swell also. I put a trade in for Penny Swell. All these dudes over here, basically, you have to use them. You see what I'm saying? Like they come into use. So I'm not going to mess with the line. I'm just looking for people that may be on the team that uh, don't have a position. Now, with uh, Matthew Ioannidis, I'm going through a contract dispute right now with Javon Hargrave and Miles Sanders. They're going to wait a little bit. They're going to wait a little bit later into the year. So I put Ioannidis in, and Ioannidis has been doing the thing. Trey Flowers, Romeo Quar, um, Rebecca David, Shaq Thompson, all these guys, everybody's playing above their weight. Uh, let me see this here. Whoa, that's a long one. One second. Just had to read something real quick. So, yeah, everybody's playing above their weight. They're playing pretty nice. Um, cornerbacks looking good. Free safety, we don't have a backup to them, but the cornerbacks can always play that. So I don't really think we need anybody else. And to tell you the truth, I don't want to trade uh, the guys we got, like Miles Sanders, just because we're in a contract dispute. It's not so much a contract dispute as they want more money. They basically want more. Like, see, they wanted more than what I offered them. So I, what was going to happen was because I didn't want to take the risk on um, I didn't want to take the risk on going over the money. I was going to wait because we're in week eight. So nine times out of ten by like week 10, 11, 12, they're going to put out the playoff standings. And once we make the playoffs, that's when I'm going to like go in there and offer them a contract. So I don't want to do that right now because I don't know what they'll do. I don't know what that'll do to the season. So and I have no interest in trading these guys. So we'll I'm gonna work a contract out with them so we can move on. I had to at least make sure are they trading Jared Goff? Wow. Which are trading Jared uh, Jared Goff for? Uh, they're looking for linebackers, huh? I mean Jared Goff ain't that bad of a quarterback. I guess I guess it's because of his uh. I guess it's because of his contract. Is he getting paid 25? Was he getting paid 25 million dollars? How long is he getting paid? Oh my God. They signed this man to 30 million dollars a year. I ain't paying that. Not for no damn Jared Goff. Um, wide receivers looking pretty regular. Tight ends. Wait, is that Kyle Rudolph? Oh, he played for the Lions. I mean, the, the Giants then? Okay. Star, free safety, zone 81, acceleration, hip power. What's that contract looking like? One year. Uh, let me see something. I might be able to dish you. Do I got any draft picks? How about um, fourth round pick next year? No interest? All right, I could do a third this year for him. I could see a third. 
Third decline. Okay, how about a third and a fourth from next year? Yeah. And now we got the free safety. Now we're over one position, but I can always look to release somebody or something like that. Okay. Now we're over one position, so somebody has to go. Somebody from the team is not going to make the Super Bowl journey. Lineman. trade away our center we just drafted him but he may be the one because it ain't gonna be monty williams and we don't have any tj edwards doing his job he's done nothing wrong um um yeah it's gonna be that center He probably don't have no interest around the league because he just started. Um, got a yellow from the Buccaneers, Cardinals. What is he so far? I mean, he has some pretty good stats. He's starting to move along pretty well. Well, the Lions have a yellow. Lions have people. Send them some. Oh, let me. You know what? Before I take the Lions, let me make sure there's no green looks. Around the league. Lions have interests. How about Garrett Bowles? How about Garrett Bowles and I don't know, they just got Bowles. How about for bowls? That way I know I have a better, stronger line. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking. How about for bowls? You give me bowls. And they give you Jason. Ah, oh, come on. Damn window. for bowls I gave Ward and Barrett trade decline <clears throat> fifth round pick we now got bowls and we're at 53 men seeing our line is more powerful now Barrett was a good defense Barrett was a good cornerback, don't get me wrong. He's going to a good team, but basically one thing I know that can end up being a problem. And then we have a Vontai Maddox as well. We were carrying a little too many cornerbacks. Like yeah, Vontai Maddox and Steven Nelson can come in. They can do the job because they play it they play the zone like seventy nine, so it'll be a little bit less at linemen. But now, because that trade went through we now have another left tackle to play that position. So the line's just that much stronger and younger because Bowles is only, Bowles is only, he only been in the league five years. So he's probably still in like his 20s, something like that. So yeah, that's probably my last um, draft pick, draft pick. That's probably my last trade. Um, let me see, what's them draft picks looking like? We got 14 and 28 coming this year. I'm trying to think, should I trade away like Trey Flowers or Romeo Carr for another cornerback? Let me see something. Just to kind of fire up that cornerback room. Uh, is there any hiddens? 
any rookies. Let's see if there's any rookies out there. Damn, Caleb Star, superstar. Damn. I wonder if they trade him for Trey Flowers. They look, they looking for a left outside linebacker. Might be able to work something out. Um, how about Trey? No interest in Trey. Romeo. Nah, they know what they got with him. He ain't a rookie no more, I don't think, either. If I'm not mistaken. See, I should have tried to get him before he... Uh, my goal, I should have been trying to get him before he... Uh, before he graduated into superstar. Yeah, because see, he's already gone. He already been turned out to be like a superstar cornerback. He's still hidden. His own coverage ain't all that good, but his man coverage is pretty good. Let me see. His zone's at about 68. His man coverage is about 78. 75. Agility. Spontaneous. Top 22%. All right, so there's one from the Saints and one from the Washington football team. I would prefer to grab that guy from the Saints, but the Saints are not going to come up off of him easy. Saints are not going to come up off of him easy because he's... Is he one of their best players? It's like their third best player. So it's, it's probably about the position. So I have Ioannidis. If I was to trade Ioannidis, then what would happen is Brandon Graham could always step in a defensive tackle or I could bring one of the linebackers. They want me to give him a tight end. How about Tunyon? How about Tunyon? And Romeo Okar. Yeah, they know what they got right there. Um, Robert, Tunyon, Romeo Okar. Yeah, they're not going to come up off of him. Probably be better to see. Well, let me see something. For a superstar cornerback? Man, for a superstar cornerback, I trade Ionitis. Ionitis in that tight end. Ionitis that tight end and Trey Flowers. They probably do it for a quarter. Damn, they ain't, I ain't got nobody I can get for that nigga. Um, shit, I might be able to keep all my people. I tell you like this, I might be able to keep all my people. How's he play the zone? He played the zone 73, man coverage is 81, balance penalty tendency, top 19% of cornerbacks, and he's still a rookie. He's already a superstar. Um, So far, I got a first-round pick, but like I said, I think this is our year. Um, let me see. I, you know what? He is a first-round talent, and basically, he can help our he can help our room. I give you the twenty-eight, the twenty-eighth pick for him, if they let him go. That's an if. Um, and hopefully, everybody's okay. It's a lot of uh, activity tonight. So that's that sort of thing where if they would hand him over. That's the sort of thing where we could, you know, he can be on our squad and then he can grow along with us. I give you a 28 for that. See, they don't have that interest in that. What about 14? Yeah, see, they got interest in 14. What about the 28th pick and Tunyon? See, they ain't got that much interest in that dude like that. And then I'd have to give up Ionitis. So let me see. How about Ionitis in the first round pick? 
probably get them for for the seventh with it. I don't have nobody on the line I can hand over. Let me see. I'm gonna need all my linemen. I don't have nobody on that line that I want to give up. I get Trey Flowers. Yep, and now we got a superstar cornerback on the team. So now I'll put him in, right? Now we got another cornerback to help that cornerback room. Because Ionitis, Ionitis is cool. I ain't got no beef with Ionitis or nothing like that. Where's he at? Beal. Put Beal in for... Steven Nelson. Put Avante Maddox ahead of him. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go back over here and see if I can't pick Ionitis back up. For like alignment or something like that. They're looking for a tackle. I got two good tackles. I give you both Ionitis. See, they know Ionitis is strength. It's one of those things where you trade them away. And now he's gone forever. I like Deron Hargrave. Deron Hargrave is not, he's not growing because of the fact that I'm not, um, in a way, like, you know, nurturing him as a player and stuff like that. So let me check and see. Oh, I had a, uh, I had a defensive tackle that I traded for from the Bills. He was, he was hidden. If he's still hidden, because I played a week, so let me see. He's still hidden. When my having him, they're looking for a left tackle. Um, how about Dillard? I don't. I don't want to lose Andre. Um, he costs nineteen million. Oh man. Is that left tackle up for a contract? Oh, he under contract for like three years. You wouldn't have to worry about that dude for a minute. Andrew Norwell's up for a contract next year. Uh but he don't normally be wanting that much. Who gonna be up for a deal? My Hargrave trying to get paid this year. Uh, Shaq Thompson is due next year. Josh Allen's already signed up. Oh, that free safety I just got. He's on. He's gonna be. He's on a one year. How much is he looking for? Let's see if he's in the area. 11 million for three years. It's not bad. I need, I have a lot of left tackles. So we have a good amount of left tackles. So I'll trade one of these. I can see trading one of these left tackles for, uh, let me see who got the better block. Undisciplined penalty tend to see him. I'll trade him for Ionitis. They're not interested. Um, just traded away my tight end. Oh no, I still got Tonya. Mmm. Let's get the ball from the Bills. I'd rather get the ball from the Bills and let him play behind. Uh, 
let him play behind the one boy. He's already a 77, hidden. His rating's pretty good. He, he got better block shedding than Ionitis. Um, top 13 defensive tackle. He got some power moves to him. He got some strength. Uh, play recognitions at 76. Bull rush. Impact blocking. Um, strength at 94. So he's a strong ball. TJ strong ball type of dude. Let's see if we can get him for Tunyon. Um, I'd hate to lose a strong left tackle for him. They would take Dillard. They were interested in Dillard. How about Isaac St. Malo? Um, So for him to go from hidden to another, he would have to play. Um, I could drop one left tackle and then have two tight ends. I think it's better to drop one left tackle. Um, we got a good amount of linemen. Good amount of linemen. Um, let me see. Andre Dillard's starting to really come along. He's at 74 right now. His pass block really got up there. Discipline penalty tendency. Um, I think it was Bowles. That his penalty tendency was undisciplined, yeah. So let's try to trade Bowles and keep all of them and just trade him straight up. Trade declines. Okay, let's put... Trade declined. Um... I'd rather keep Tunyon if I could. Hmm. Cause I don't really have that many positions where people could be traded. Even Monty Williams, he's starting to come along nice. Stats starting to get up there a little bit. I want to let go of TJ Edwards. If I give up bowls, I'm thinking I should get, I should go after, uh, if I'm going to go after anybody, it should probably be, because I'm trying to think, because if I go after this defensive tackle ball here, when I picked him up, he only had uh, the three bar strength, so that means that his stamina is going to be down a bit, and then he is probably, his power moves is up there, his play recognition is pretty good, tackle's pretty good, um, he's hidden. So he could end up becoming a star or he could end up becoming normal. So that's what kind of me. And he's under a four-year contract. But if this was a playoff scenario and say we were deep in the playoffs, I would need somebody to step in and be able to play the position outright. So let's see for the one ball if they would let him go for Ionitis. So there's some interest there. And then they want a tight end. Um, how about bowls? I give you bowls. And Nor nah, not Norwell. How about Bowles and um? They're looking for a left guard. Norwell, Norwell been playing a guard position. I think great. I don't think he needs to be traded anywhere. 
Same thing with Bowles. I don't even think Bowles needs to be traded like that. Nah, we just gonna keep our people, y'all. We gonna keep our people. Um, Cause I think the line is one of the main places that can fall apart. And then a defensive tackle, Brandon Graham or anybody else could slide in and play defensive tackle. Like I'll just pick a defensive tackle. Well, I like Ionitis. Let me see something. See if this will work. If this trade will go through. So they're looking for a left tag, left guard, huh? How about we just do Norwell? Halfway there. Um, two good linemen. Then it'd be like, is he worth two good linemen? I don't think he's worth two good linemen. I could see one good lineman and maybe a tight end. I give you Tunyon and go and go. For the seventh round pick along with it, we'll probably get him back. Just declined. Just by a hair declined. Um, yeah, they asked him for some people. Tunyon then proved he could play tight end. Man, that dude, the Washington Redskins, anyway. Let that dude stay where he at. So let's go back up here. Like I said, um, let's just climb into some weeks. Let's put the lineup fresh. Make sure everybody is where they need to be. Najee Harris, fullback. Wide receiver. All right, wide receiver set up. Tight end is good. I'm glad we didn't trade the left tackle. Left tackle is going to be good. Got some people backing it up in case we need some help. Oh, what's the name's hurt? Good thing we got Linder. Good thing we got Linder. Who else could have played it? Dawkins could have played it at 85. He played center pretty good. But we're going to let Linder do it today. Penny Swell going to play right tackle. Josh Allen's going to play the left. Josh Sweat's going to play the right. Two Joshes on the line. Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargrave going to run the D tackle. Left linebacker is LeBeckel. Let's get Robert up there, take Josh Allen out, and put TJ Edwards. Middle linebacker, let's put TJ Edwards over LeBeckel David. Once again, let's put TJ Edwards, excuse me, TJ Edwards up here. Cornerbacks. Beal is out there now. He'll see the field. Simmons and Daniels. Kick return on us. I don't want to get Waddle hurt, but he is running kicks off like crazy. Linebacker strength, I mean line strength. Power half back. Third down, half back, slot wide receiver. Rush left end, Josh Allen. Rush right end, Josh Sweat. Defensive tackle, Hargrave. Fletcher Cox, sub linebackers. Slot cornerback. All right, we're set. Oh, let me bring the game audio down a bit because I kind of cranked it around the time I was. Let me turn it up just a little more and then turn me up a little more over top of that. Cool. All right. So we are beyond the trade window. I'm trying to think, do we need Ionitis? You know what? Here's what's going to happen. We're going to go to the player negotiation. And we're at least going to negotiate with um, Javon Hargrave. That way we at least know we got him under contract for two more years. So we're going to put $5 million on this. And we're going to jump this up to 135 What? Javon Hargrave don't want to play anymore? Bruh. Bruh, now we need Ionitis. Oh, man, that's crazy. Let's see if Miles Sanders want to sign for five years. Turn this up to $5 million. Signing bonus of 560 What? 
thought he want to be traded too? Nigga, y'all said the wrong thing, bro. Y'all just said the wrong. Y'all just said the wrong thing. I can't believe that. I'm. Oh man, I'm like, yo, these dudes they don't want to sign their contracts. They want out. Hey, if you want to be traded, I can get you up out of here, bro. But what I'm about to do is I'm about to go back. I'm about to get me a trade. Find me a quarter. Find me a, a new defensive tackle. Y'all can just stay on the team. I'm not gonna trade you. I'm not. I'm not gonna do you like that. I might need some help. How you gonna say that you don't want to offer, and you the one came up with the five year deal? Like what the hell? That's cool. We gonna move right along. Gonna stop us as a team. Taking both of these dudes out. They done for the year. I might even trade you. Derek Brown, 24 years old. I'd rather, you know what? I'd rather get the ball from the Bills just to see. Because I like his stats. He's already a 78. Yep, let's get this trade going. See if I can get him for that left tackle. Can take bowls. Trade's almost done right there. About to get another left tackle. About to get another defensive tackle in here. And then we can flip them dudes for picks. Real talk. Flip them dudes for picks. No, I don't want to trade St. Malo. Yeah, you want to leave? Go ahead and leave. I'd rather have a left left um, defensive tackle. I'm about to flip them dudes for some picks. Y'all want to go somewhere else? Y'all can go somewhere else and do that. I'm trying to find... Okay, let's put a uh, seventh round pick along with it. All right, so if you don't want bowls, how about Dawkins? <laughs> we going into the playoffs. We need a push. So, like I said, I'm willing to, I'm willing to let some people go. Um, uh, it just depends on who those people are going to be. I like Nasir Adderley. about bowls and damn I traded that center already I have nobody to trade I need everybody on the squad for this push how about Adderley it's cool Adderley just got here now we got another defensive tackle. So the question now comes in, right? The question now comes in, should I trade him for a pick? That's what I'm about to do. I'm about to I'm about to identify some rookie somewhere, right, that's doing the damn thing. We already got top cornerback rookies. I think we got the top superstar cornerback rookies. So I'm about to identify maybe wide receiver. We already we, we packed a wide receiver. So maybe left them right in. Check that out. Trevor Gates, normal. Dre, okay. Power rusher. Acceleration, tackle, block shedding, strength, play recognition, power moves, undisciplined penalty tendency.
Superstar rookie right in. What are y'all looking for? Y'all looking for right tackles, huh? Did I trade away my left tackle already? Yeah, I traded away bowls. I don't like that, man. That's one thing I don't like. I don't like the fact I don't like that you going so basically if you're saying that you you don't wanna play if you're saying that you don't wanna play this year, like under the contract, like basically they're like um not interested and not interested. So basically you don't wanna play for the team anymore. You want to basically play for the next couple of games and play into the playoffs, and I don't. I have a problem with that because I'm everybody that's on the team. I want everybody that's on the team to be playing to help us win, not just be riding along the coattails, bro. So, if y'all feel as that's what y'all gotta do. That's what y'all gotta do. But y'all not gonna do that shit on my team. <clears throat> y'all do that shit somewhere else. So I'll take him. Y'all can take um, Javon Hargrave. I'll trade you Hargrave for him. Trade declined. Trade accepted. Now we got Superstar right in. Same thing with Miles Sanders. Seeing as how Miles doesn't want to play anymore. You can go ahead and ship him out. We got Superstar right in. <coughs> Let's so identify another player. It wasn't even that I didn't have him. Let me see something, too, before before I get him out of here completely. Let me see something, because I saw something in the staff thing where you can unlock. You can only unlock one player. You can only franchise tag um, one player. So that's the thing about it. Franchise tags only work for one player. Uh Uh, this I would have to go all the way down here to get unlock one player resigning who is not interested in negotiating per year. So I traded away Javon Hargrave because you can only fetch you can only franchise tag one player, and he doesn't want to be paid. So I'm going to bring in a defensive tackle and work it out better. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can trade um, Miles Sanders because I just traded. Javon Hargrave to the Texans, right? Yeah, he now plays for the Texans. So I would trade him for Miles Sanders. But the question of it is, would they take Miles Sanders for him? Trade accepted, yeah. I would rather franchise tag Javon Hargrave and keep him as a defensive tackle than franchise tag Miles Sanders. And I know that Miles, Miles is a good halfback and everything like that, but if you want to bounce, go ahead and bounce, you know. But I'd rather have Javon Hargrave because he's damn near about to become a new Fletcher Cox. You know, he's like five points away from 92. I'm like, I'd rather have Javon Hargrave and, and just have to work a contract out with him. I think he's going to say the same thing. He's not interested. Oh, no, he said start negotiations. I'm about to blow this contract out the water. Uh, okay, we're going to turn this up. We're going to turn this into a three-year deal. Actually, we're going to turn this into a four-year deal. We're going to turn this up to four or five. Matter of fact, we're going to put that on five million. And we're going to put this on a solid 225. But I need you around for four years. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, I wonder, this is what I wonder as well. Does the same thing happen with Miles Sanders? So, to find that out, you would have to trade somebody to these dudes, but let's see, cause that's a that's a move right there. We just we just learned a move, like we just learned a real move that I didn't know you could do in this game. Like that's some that's some sweet stuff right there. So you can trade a player away. You can basically trade a player away and then trade him back, and it's like he's willing to negotiate all over again. How about for Norwell? I got interest in him. He's one of us, so they don't want him for Norwell. Uh, we have Dawkins. I have Mylotta, and then I have Dickerson, 
and I have Daniels. So I traded Dawkins for him. Well, the thing of it is, is if his contract opens back up again. But, yeah, he's a New York Giant, so I don't care. Yeah, see, they got a lot of value on him now. He's their best running back. He's going to be their uh, bell cow running back. Um, all of the superstar right in. Um, okay, 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 I see you. What the hell is Charles got on this damn thing? One second, I got to mute the mic. Man, shout out to my vape store, man. This straw apple is the truth. Shout out, man. Y'all be holding me down. Them flavors always be kicking from them dudes. Um, yeah, I trade him. I trade somebody away for him. You know, this is this is Miles Sanders we talking about. You know, he just he wants to be paid out. I know what it is. Big. He wants the big boy contract. You know, he want to be paid out. So, I'm willing to help him out. I'm willing to help him out. Um, if I let go of Tunyon. Then I lose a star tight end, and damn, he's catching at 99. No, that's not happening. Um, um, I don't really want to lose Norwell, um, but I want to get him back just to see because I didn't know it would open that window up like that. Um, I only got one draft pick, and I'm not giving that up. Um, I have a lot of cornerbacks, but they 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 prime for the season. They prime ready for the season. Um, how about Richard? You can take the fullback. I have use check. Damn, that trade not going through. They got him now. They got a hold of Miles Sanders, and they're like, "Bro, you are not getting him back." They got no interest in the fullback. They got any interest in this dude? It's like halfway interest for Dawkins. <clears throat> yeah, they're going to want an arm and a leg. Now I can franchise tag him. Y'all done got him out of here? That's crazy. Uh, Quez Watkins. Okay, we getting there. How about Tanya? I can see this lineup. Damn, trade was declined. Hey, look, he wanted to play somewhere else. I'm going to let him play somewhere else. You know, I'm going to do it like that. If they sign him to a deal, ah, oh, man, that's our boy, though. That's my boy, though. I, I, I didn't really want to trade him. He the one that said he wanted out. And then when I got Hargrave back, I could see that, you know, they willing to, um, where did I send them to the Texans? They willing, because they all, all they had was Lindsey. They had Phillip Lindsey, so. They're looking for a center. Um, I could trade Brian Linder. Linder been in the game like eight years. I could trade. I'd trade Linder for Sanders. How about Linder and Dillard? Oh no, nah, I can't trade Dillard. How about Linder and Dawkins? Trade declined. Okay, Linder Dawkins. Damn, that's two good people. What the hell? Nah, you didn't get my first round pick. Um. Oh, you know what? We could trade Romeo Okora. That way we don't got to trade nobody from the line. Romeo cool and everything like that, but, you know, I can always find another left outside linebacker. How about Romeo? Because I want to keep Linder. How about Romeo and Dawkins? Trade decline. Let's put... I don't have a seventh round pick, so let's put... Quez Watkins on the bottom. 
And we got Miles Sanders back. Three people short. But we got him back, and it should reopen his window. Okay, we're back to negotiations. Okay, so there's no sign-in bonus there. Why, I don't know. But let's put this up to about $5 million. Actually, let's put it up to about six five. Six five, and then we put a sign in bonus of like one twenty five. So they're signed. We're eleven million over the cap. I'm not worried about that. Brian Linder wants to resign. We still got Linder. Uh um the only person I would come back from them would be they got Dawkins from us. That's a sad note. We lost some people, but we kept the Eagles. You know, I wanted to keep the people we have. We still got Norwell, still got Daniels, all the starters, Penny Sewell, still got Landon Dickerson, um, Andrew Dillard. You know, we still got some dogs out there. Uh, so let me see. Uh, We didn't have to lose anybody major. We got some new dudes to the squad, too, as well. So, kind of stepped up. Um, yeah, they can keep Dawkins. Dawkins was somebody I got from the Giants. He's pretty good, but not really worried about him like that. Okay, so let's set up the new lineup. Let's set the new lineup. Okay, so I'm at quarter. Halfback is Najee Harris. Miles Sanders is okay with that because he got his paycheck. We ain't got to worry about him. Tunyon, we was able to hold on to him, which is going to help. Jordan Mailata is our left tackle. Left guard is Norwell. Dickerson behind him. Center is Linder. Brandon Brooks going to start. Penny Swell is in because Lane Johnson's hurt. Josh Allen's going to play the left. Um, no, we're going to let Sterling Graham. Well, let me see something. Who's better for the rush? So he's better. So Josh Allen's Josh Sweat's better for the rush. Suppose a rookie. Bring him in at right end. And Josh will come in for the rush. The rush. Rush. Hargrave over Donalds over Douglas. Levaka David. Did we trade Romeo? Yeah, we traded Romeo. I'm glad to sign a left outside linebacker, so I might as well just do that now because they're going to make me sign a left outside linebacker. They're going to say something about, you need a left outside linebacker to start this. I want another quarterback to back us up too on the field just in case something happens. Like, I don't feel safe being out there with just three quarterbacks. Is Nick Foles out there? No, Nick? Oh, he must have retired or got hired somewhere. So, Jacoby Brissett, pretty good quarterback. Good scramble, tight spiral. With Cam Newton. I'm going to go with Cam. We got Cam, and then we're going to need a left outside linebacker. No rookies? Jimmy Riles, pick him up. Because he's not going to play. It's just basically a starter position. Get the rookie some, some help. It's 
for make sure they haven't changed anything yeah see they they would have changed it Josh Sweat can always step back and play the um Josh Allen can always step Josh Allen Josh Sweat can always step back and play the uh linebacker position we have some good linebackers though we got Shaq Thompson Edwards, Josh Allen still out there, so I think we'd be pretty good on linebacker if anything was to go down. All right, I think we good. All right, we're straight. Oh, about to lose the whole stream. Damn battery was about to drain out of the computer. Would have shut the whole thing down. Okay, let's go. We can advance to next week. All trades are final now. We only lost one franchise pick. I mean, one first round pick, but we gained a we gained a superstar right in and a superstar. Uh, Superstar right in and a superstar returning from injury. Who's returning from injury? Jason Kelsey is back. All right, all right, all right. Our center is back. So the defense went down a little bit from 89 to 85. We got rid of some people we had, which is understandable. Let's check the free agency, see if anybody was put out from their teams. All the same people, looks like. Uh Nobody knew. Jimmy Smith, zone. What's that cornerback room looking like? Dang, all these guys play the zone pretty well. Oh, Robbie Coleman. Yeah, hey, that's my boy. He plays zone 82. Pick him up. Just in case, you know? Never know where you can need a ball. Josh Norman. Ooh, his man to man is very bad. We could use a little help at linebacker if y'all got some linebackers. Who y'all got? Oh, who's this? Patrick on the, on the wall, Sierra, I think. Yeah, pick him up, man. Pick him up. He played for the Ravens for a while. Oh, no, I should have been Jamie, Co Jamie Collins Sr. Yeah, fire the other ball. I'm going to let the other ball go. Yeah. This whole ridiculously loud truck for no apparent reason. Justin Alex Singleton. Alex got to be picked up. I'll let go of that. I'll, I'll let go of somebody. You're going to cut two people, huh? Alex Singleton's out there. Yo, we ain't got no linebackers. Let me let go of. I already know who I'm going to let go of. Let's go over the left. Oh, I got to keep him because he's a left outside linebacker. He's the guy playing left outside linebacker. Okay. Um. Let's release. We got to release two people. So let's release. Let's release this guy because we got Jamie Collins. Okay, and we got to release one other person.
Let's see if I can't trade him away for uh Oh, I can't. It's past the trade window. Dang, who are they recommending that I cut? Oh, I remember what happened with Singleton. Singleton didn't want to take his contract. You out of here, bro. We got we got Mer we got the Titans up next. Let's see if there's any upgrades for us. Why, right, yes there is. Jamie just got on the team. He can upgrade already. Um, field general. Steven Nelson zone. Hey, if you play the man, play the man. How well is his zone? Zones are about seventy eight. His man to man's eighty four though, so it's a good that's a good lineman right there. I mean, good cornerback. Play season game. Man settings. Multiple defense. Run balance. So they have Derek Henry, Superstar X Factor halfback. We have Stefan Gilmore, Superstar X Factor cornerback. Best defensive tackle in the game. Fletcher Cox, Superstar X Factor defensive tackle. Levante David, Superstar X Factor middle linebacker. They got Julio Jones. Superstar X Factor wide receiver. We got Brandon Brooks, superstar right guard. Casey Hayward Jr., superstar cornerback. Miles Jack, superstar middle linebacker. Jason Kelsey, superstar center. Darius Big Play Slay Jr., superstar cornerback. Josh Allen, superstar right outside linebacker. Shaq Thompson, superstar right outside linebacker. Najee Harris, superstar halfback. Devontae Smith, superstar wide receiver. Jack Fox, superstar punter. Jalen Waddle, superstar wide receiver, and Penny Sewell, superstar right tackle. And the rest of our players have not actually shown who they are, so we're waiting to see who they are yet. That's right, boys. That's right. Madden NFL 22, and today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Titans and the Eagles, and it's coming up next. I'm glad we was able to get Miles and Hargrave under contract. Just north of the Delaware Expressway and east of Broad Street, we find ourselves at Lincoln Financial Field in South Philly. The scene in South Philly a few moments ago. Boy, the city of brotherly love is fired up. They're saying, fly, Eagles, fly. As they get ready to match up. With the Tennessee Titans. Damn, the Utah Jazz beating my Sixers. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And CD, this is a passing league. I don't think you would argue that thought. 
But our ball game here features a couple of teams with strong offensive lines that really like to work the ground game. And you and I have both heard from different people in the league who are saying that it's becoming a little bit of a lost art in the NFL, the ability to run the football. And we've heard from defensive coordinators who tell us that they play the pass first. That's not something you normally hear. But these two offenses, they're true to who they are. Both ranked in the top five in terms of rushing yardage. I think they're both going to use those massive offensive Yeah, Derrick Henry going to be coming with the rush today. Defenses. Oh, I was doing something. I didn't know they kicked it to me. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. And they will be oh, I got 29 touchdowns already. And I think if you ask most folks to give you their first half MVP, very likely they're going to say it's this man right here. The NFL's leader of touchdown passes to this point in the season, still two months to go. But if he can keep going to the pace he's at, this is going to be a dangerous team come January, and he could very well walk away with the MVP. A look at the numbers for Harris in last week's game. He was creeping up toward 200 yards. Thought he was going to get there. Didn't quite make it, but also two rushing touchdowns. Yeah, we won. I didn't get Miles Jack his, his upgrade, but we won. down carry for Harris five yards is the tally on first down that brings up second and five defensively here you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL so when they're that high power you've got to find a way to hold them under 20 because to me that's the magic number 20 points scored give yourself a bit, you give yourself your best chance to win. so if they're up around 24 28 30 they could be in some trouble and I think so because then you turn it into a shootout and that means your offense has to keep pace our game not even two minutes old, but a quick red zone opportunity. It's first and ten from the 12. They hand this off to Harris. A nice display of powerful running, but it takes him only to the seven. He's dropped there. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Touchdown, one, two, three. Hit him low, hit him high. And watch our eagles fly. Fly, eagles fly. On the road to victory. E A G I E S Eagle. Setting out a 
kick this one away, and off it goes. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Titans set to take over behind their quarterback, Ryan Tannehill. And his stat line last week, that's not going to get him to the Pro Bowl. All right, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but they won. And so the bottom line for him is... No touchdowns, no interceptions, they won. Here, it's probably leaning on Henry. Nice tackle, Josh. Damn, I forgot Derek can catch. Got lucky. Go after him, y'all. Oh, no. Good defense. Tunyon. What I'm talking about Tunyon. So I'm glad I ain't trade this dude. Look at 
Look at that. If they didn't have help, that was a touchdown. That man still on the ground. Right. Smith. Takes it at the seventh. And he'll be stopped up at the twenty-five. Now on the return, oh, no. got an injured player down there. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Who is that? That looked like Jalen Rieger. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. Four and four, their record through eight games on the season. Would you say that this team has overperformed, underperformed, or they kind of no. thought that they would be? Do you mind if I say yes, yes, and yes? Because ultimately to me, four and four is about where they should be because we've seen weeks where they've been really, really good. They've looked terrific. Other weeks where we wonder just how good is this team? They want to be consistent in their play, not consistently inconsistent, which is what they've been thus far. Second and 12. A shotgun handoff to Henry. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. They've got to give kudos to you. Don't want Jalen Rager to get hurt. Damn. Titans on third down. They've been okay. 
Okay, two for three thus far. This is third and seven. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multi Talk them short. Shaq Thompson, great tackle. So much of that offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job doing limiting that and keeping it from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. there and CD that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, Father, when you're losing any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Here comes Jalen Waddle from his end zone. And down he goes just shy of the 25. Now penalty marker is down. Let's see what that's about. Come on, Casey. Come on, Casey. They want to get the safety. My fault. Completely my fault. Right. Pin them deep.
chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. Yeah, you do. Damn, they be pushing them forward and shit. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. Gets through and now an opening. Yo, this nigga just can't be taken down. That's you, this dude right here, bro. This going to be a game. It's going to be a game. He really did just. Good touch. Good defense. Man, I put the rush, rush inside and he rushed outside. I knew I should have went for the deep pass instead of the rush. Come on with the penalties, y'all. Can... Big play, big play. Dallas. Right, get loud on them, y'all. Bring it in. No, nah, don't play the rush. Don't don't blitz him. That's that's what he's looking for. He's looking for that bunched up blitz stuff. See? 
No, nah, you got to take on a linebacker. Nope. Free safety. Got him. That's right, Shaq. See how y'all playing? Y'all playing all the way through Derrick Henry. Good stop, y'all. Good stop. I'm gonna try to make it worth. I'm gonna try to make it worth it. Sixers fight back. Smith. I was going to throw it to Juju, but he didn't get free in time. He got it, bro. Unit is out on the field and they will 
No return. No. No way. He got it. Oh my God. Well. Got him. Got to play this one smart. On second down, this is Harris. And he's able to get this one down to the 40 yard line. 117 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. They'll look 
Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I threw two interceptions. This is my first two interception game. I know the fans are pissed. Damn. Mm, mm, mm. Can't believe I just did that. See what I'm talking about? And alignment gets hurt. And he has broken ribs. So not only did I throw the pass away, but I threw it to alignment that now has broken ribs. That was stupid. Fourth quarter becoming very interesting. That pick six makes this a one score game. Still plenty of time on the clock. We'll see how aggressive they choose to be. And this turns into a nice game with a slide at the end. The escape ability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Throw right side, caught by Goddard, the tight end. Didn't want to throw an interception. Harris. I threw a couple of interceptions in this game. It wasn't a good game. Well, my end from the quarterback position. Luckily, I played with a good team. Nah, it ain't over yet. Turn out to the 27-yard line. So now Tannehill and the Titans down by 
10. A minute 46 to go. Now Tannehill. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Tannehill right off the bat at the first down to start the drive. 12 yards. He's got Furtzer. Not much there. Only a yard. second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Tannehill to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. He caught it. Oh my God. The tight edge, yo. This is crazy. Damn, Julio went a one on one and got us on that one. Oh my god. Oh my god. I threw a third interception, bro. This was like my worst game of the career right here. I just threw them a fucking Oh my god. I knew I should have took the knee. Being greedy. I'm going to have a monster game the next game. I'm going to make up for this. Good defense, y'all.
it done in this one. So for Philadelphia, the train just keeps rolling. Nine and oh now to start this campaign. We got out of here. Enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for Yeah, I played a bad game in that one. Threw up like three interceptions. It was a bad game in that one. Dallas Goddard. So I'm talking about Goddard. Jalen Waddle. Deep threat. Oh, I get an upgrade? That's cool. Um, let's put this on strong arm. I feel like the passes are getting intercepted because they're not they're not getting there. So Uh, who got hurt? Oh, Norwell is hurt, huh? Lane Johnson is out two weeks, and now Norwell is out for four weeks with broken ribs. Man. Um, so who's going to play left guard? Lander Dickerson or Linder? Uh, I'm going to bring... No, nah, let, let Dickerson play it. He needs to get the stats. Who wants to negotiate? I'm out of money. Whoever wants to negotiate gonna have to wait till like week 17. Yeah, all these people wait until like week 17. Advance to next week. Oh, my Sixers lost. Advance to next week. Upgrade players. All right, got some upgrades. Josh Allen, speed rusher. See, look, he's only going to go up. You know, probably like next year, he'd be like a 90 or something. Devontae Smith, deep threat. He about to be a 90. Jack Fox, our punter. Power. Jamie Daniels. Put this on. One second. All right, I'm going to be taking a small chill break. Let me put it in here. Okay, I'm going to be taking a small break here. Give me some minutes, and I shall return, and then we will continue.
All right, I am back. Let's put this on Jamie Daniels, strong safety. Um, hybrid is man coverage, play recognition look like. No, press and press coverage look like. Um, zone, we play more zone. I want him to be a keen to the zone, so that way if he comes out as like a star or something, we can use that. Trayvon Douglas, the right tackle that we, the defensive tackle we just picked up, he ain't getting no reps. Put this on power. Levecco David, Levante. I see. I keep saying Levecco. Levante David. Let him be a field general for your field general. All right, so, so far I got one pick, but that could change in the off season. Uh, the one place where we definitely need a person, uh, cornerbacks took a dive. So, no top run cornerbacks. Defensive tackle, left outside linebacker. Like a true outside, let's, let's scout him. And let's got this defensive tackle and Be top five quarterbacks coming out. It's around that time where there'd be another quarterback class. It's got this left five, left tackle. Left outside linebacker, defensive tackle on the left tackle. Yep. Scout them. Lane Johnson is back from injury. Casey Hayward is back from injury. We got 22 points. Boost the defense some. Okay. We're in week 11 versus the Colts. Oh, Carson Wentz and the boys. Let me put that in the chat.
Alright, so let's see if there are some upgrades. We 86, they are 83. And Dickerson the star. Thursday night prime time. They got DeForest Bunkner, superstar X Factor defensive tackle. Excuse me, defensive tackle. They got Stefan Gilmore, Superstar X Factor cornerback. They got Dar Darius Leonard, Superstar X Factor left outside linebacker. We got the best defensive tackle in the game, Fletcher Cox, Superstar X Factor defensive tackle. Levante David, Superstar X Factor middle linebacker. They got Quentin Nelson, Superstar left guard. We got Brandon Brooks, Superstar right guard. Casey Hayward Jr., Superstar. Uh, Miles Jack, super, excuse me, Casey Hayward Jr., superstar cornerback. Miles Jack, superstar middle linebacker. Jason Kelsey, superstar, superstar center. Lane Pave the Lane Johnson, superstar right tackle. Jason Kelsey, superstar center. Darius Big Play Slade Jr., superstar cornerback. Josh Allen, superstar right outside linebacker. Shaq Thompson, superstar right outside linebacker. Devontae Smith, superstar. Devontae Smith, the Slim Reaper, superstar wide receiver. Jack Fox, superstar punter. Najee Harris, superstar halfback. Jalen Waddle, superstar wide receiver. And Penny Sewell, superstar right tackle. And they have Bobby, superstar middle linebacker. Okay, so this is going to be a really stretched out match. Carson can throw the ball. It's one thing I know about Carson. Carson can throw the ball. It's week 11 of the 2022 season, and tonight's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Eagles and the Colts on Thursday night's primetime. It's the National Football League, presented by EA Sports. Just a short time ago, smoke from the pyrotechnics filled the dome as the Colts made their way out of the locker room. We're set for football as the Colts get set to match up with the Philadelphia Eagles. No wind in here. <coughs> Had it easy. What? After that last game, where we all struggled, defense and offense. We'll take that. Big play, Slay Jr. Darius, big play, Slay Jr. 
looks here at the man calling the plays at her center, their 6'4 quarterback. And what he's thinking about right now is first down, let's find a way to make a big play. Because when you get a sudden change situation, that defense has to rush onto the field unexpectedly, you might catch them having a defensive breakdown or not quite prepared. And it was really sudden after the first play picked off. Mm. A first carry for Najee Harris. And not much running room. Down to the 32. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Toward the sideline. And look at that catch. Dragging the toes. And that's going to be a first down. Well done. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And remember, this drive started off the turnover and they've taken no time working their way down the short field a nice connection there and now they're looking at a first and goal see with a team like this you're not going to be able to like fake them out like he's not going to go for that yeah point forthcoming. He's got it and the Eagles lead at seven zip. See, that's something I'm relying on too. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. to the cold offense ready to go back to work and he'll need to find a way to shrug off the opening drive if you can even call it a drive one play and an interception so he's got to forget that i know that in today's football we have a good number of coaches who don't look at time of possession the way that the, the old school guys did but there's still a place for it and i think that on this drive after having thrown that interception they're going to eat up a little bit more clock and run some offense to give their defense a little bit of a break throwing on first down but this one winds up to be incomplete and this passing game's whole offense really didn't show up in the loss last week, and it hmm. hasn't started all that great here either. Yeah, they can't let that incompletion become an uh-oh moment. Like, oh boy, here we go again, just like last week. Each game is its own entity, treated as such. On second and ten, Wentz. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Throwing his wins. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll take so I'm coming came down for coverage. Allows them to down focus and only. And he can't find a receiver. 
receiver, and he's brought down. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Flushed out right. Oh, my God. Starting the game off for the NL. Should have just took that sack. All right, we even, Carson. We even. My defense took one. Your defense took one. We back to zero. Got him. Josh Allen. And now Dickerson is down. Give. This is Harris, and he'll get about three as he's 
taken down at the 14 yard line. I do know from experience that when this Ooh, is a running game, you're not doing the dick. Now we're down to another line, and that makes three. This is where we're going to bring Winder in. Take what you can get. Kick that one a little too high. A drive that time of six plays. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. On the return, Deontay Harris. Now a hit and a loose football. And it's picked up by the Eagles. That's right. think you got a chance at a turnover, and instead, not only do you give up the football, you also give up a touchdown as well. Yeah, you just think to yourself, you've done all the hard work, right? You forced the fumble, but when they didn't come up with it, I think they relaxed a little bit, or maybe lost their focus as well. Big time, big time. And it's twenty one to three. The scoop and score always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. Oh, it's going to be short. Two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Here's Harris to return it. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. They are currently mired in a losing streak. Now they get the short week for the Thursday night game. Do you see that as a potential positive or is it just more in what has been really a string of bad luck for them? Well, to me, it comes down to leadership. That leadership's got to spin it into a positive and make it an advantage for them. Yes, we're in a losing streak. Yes, no one thinks we can win. But we have the resources we need right here in this room. Let's go ahead and play better. Let's Good tackling. Good tackling. We'll take that. Came up the middle. Mac met him up the middle. So far over the 
40-yard mark here in the second quarter. Don't forget about those guys up front, though. They've been effective, too. The leverage game has been in their favor. They've been the ones who have been able to bend their knees, drop their hips, and get a little bit lower than the guys <laughs> on the other side of the football. They've moved them out of the way for the runner. Sometimes that's tough for those big fellas. Not an easy thing for them to do. Oh, my God. Oh my god, how many interceptions is that, yo? What is going on with me? How many interceptions is that? Two interceptions. Wow. I'm throwing 29 interceptions, 29 touchdowns, and now I'm starting to throw interceptions. We'll take that back. We'll take that. This first half has been a nightmare for that offense. Defense just dominating them. And when you're picking up the ball, picking up their mistakes, and taking it the other way and putting it in the end zone, that's a defense's dream. They're having that type of a game. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for this offensive unit. point good and the roughing call going to move the ball out to the 50 for the kickoff and I think this is a good chance to pin them deep if you can land the kickoff inside the five yard line or so gain some field position for your defense and not willing to risk another fumble he'll sit on this one it's a touchback and he's set to go you don't want to come out now No. Great tackle, Maddox. Chance for Waddle on the return. We'll call that a 49-yard punt, but a net of just 39 following the 10-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. And he's found the end zone twice, and now I'm guessing he's thinking, hey, let's find it three times. And you got to figure from the defensive perspective, how has he gotten there twice? What are we going to do to keep him out for a third time? How do we tighten things down? Because he and his offensive mates, they are really in sync right now. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And avoids the contact by sliding. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. They'll look to throw now on first down. A 
escaping the pressure right. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. Oh, and now some space to operate. And he almost made it, but just short. Finally out of bounds, right down around the goal line. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. throw here. Flush to his right. He'll find Smith-Schuster again. A lot of work to get away and outside of the pocket, but no actual yardage there on the catch. It's second down. Now flags come in here. Looks like one of the Eagles might have moved. Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time and it caused a jump. Discussion down there. Bad guys coming. Pick them up. Pick them up. And someone jumped. Looking to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. And will end up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third-down situation. They'll try to run with Harris. And Harris is not going to get there. Great work defensively to stop him short. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. And his kick is right there. It's good. So three points on the board, as easy a field goal as you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you're hey, to get in, you're still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity? And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The end the offense at the line and set to go. And we'll see how they want to play this. Just a little over 20 seconds to go. On first down, Wentz. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. Gilmore. Stephon. So this defense doubling its pleasure there. Remember, they had the fumble return for a score earlier in the game. And now this time, an interception return for another score. Two now for the point after. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the defense creating some points. How many interceptions is that per person? I got two. Carson got two. So we're even again, Carson. Getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. Here's Harris to return it. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Colts come to the line, ready to start their next drive. And with only nine seconds remaining, with mean, not much time, we'll see how they play this. Now Wentz to try again after the pick six. He'll check this down to Hines. And he goes out right around the 39. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. A final shot before half for Wentz. He's going to throw one up for the end zone. Oh my god, that Hail Mary crap work. Did you see that? <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, that was, that was a toss-up. 
I'm gonna start getting involved in them things now. Now that it's starting to be they coming down with them, I'm gonna start getting involved in them things. <clears throat> I'm gonna start getting involved, like jumping up. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and CD in a minute. First, it's time to take a look at what we've got coming your way this weekend in the NFL. In the one o'clock game, the one that catches the eye happens in Big D at AT&T Stadium. A tough test for the Cowboys as they'll host the Washington Football Team. More good stuff later in the afternoon. One being down in the desert, where it'll be the Cardinals at home in Glendale, taking on the New Orleans Saints. And lastly, we'll all be tuned in on Monday night for what should be a great one between the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. Time now for a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Eagles. And the ground game has been a big part of why they have this big lead and you have to figure they'll lean on it a little bit more in the third and fourth quarters meanwhile for the Colts there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football and they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break final adjustments being made for the second half whether they'll amount to much in a game that's already pretty well decided um, so that's help me with the deep Kevin pass Let's get you back out. deep route okay. running and then they're throwing it deep on us, so deep pass with Carson Wentz as well. Okay, Coach, thanks. Yeah, that's something to consider. Are we in for more one-way traffic here in the second half? It has not been a competitive game to this point. This one taken just inside the 10. And he returns this to the 22. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And it's hard to imagine that the first half could have gone any better for them. So what's the approach here in the second half? Just continue to play smart football because they got the other team down and they feel good about the position. Oh, I thought that was a third interception coming. Just keep attacking, but I think you also have to be smart about it. Avoid turnovers. That's about the only thing that can derail you at this point. Attack, but make sure you take care of the ball. Flushed out right. What the fuck is that? Oh, it's not about the score, it's about my stats. I'm about to challenge that. Oh, you're not going to let me challenge it. He scored and everything. <laughs> he scored on the runaway and everything, yeah. Oh, man. I normally dominate more than this. They got more players out here nowadays, too, though. That's going to put up a good score.
Colts 30. They give them 27 yards on the third down conversion. Now that's all about making something happen as a quarterback because instead of forcing something on third down, how about him buying some time outside of the pocket, waiting for someone to come open, and when he did, he put it on him for a big play and a first down. That's right, Waddle. changes well those changes aren't working so now where do you go i think that now it's much more in their head and what i mean by that is just what you said you've gone over the changes i bet they were pretty clinical at the half not too emotional they might need to go to the emotional side because you've got to find something some spark somewhere and so far just being calm hasn't exactly worked they need any spark at this point meanwhile wince is thrown into the hands of Pittman here and from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Now Wentz on third down. Buying time to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. A nice pick up there, 10 yards. When they watch film of this game and hand out the great sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambled picks up a first down but what else does he do protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit double plus big time play and taking it across midfield and inside the 45 another nice gain 16 yards there and a first down again Give him that. It's my job as a QB to go out and put uh put put points on him. Right at midfield. Able to make something out of nothing there. 
Why take the pass? Tunyon. Going back and forth, we put the weapon here today. Five plays there on that drive. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Good defense, good defense. Paying for every every catch. Well, shy of the first. 
last year as the tackle's made right around the 12. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Now Wentz, got to have this one. Good defense, good defense. Eagles defense able to hold. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Having a slump game. Oh shit, they might get a touchdown on us. Good stop, good stop. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. Because he knew I couldn't pull him early because he could have threw to him. Touchdown. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. 
Bam, Fletcher Cox down now. continue to roll right along really this has the looks of yet another victory as they hope to polish it off here in quarter number four open man right side is smith schuster complete now the eagles will use the second of their timeouts that'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play so from the 36 now first and ten Play fake. He'll look to throw. Rolling to his right. Finding some room in midfield. And all the way down. Nah, that's it. We'll let it go. I don't want to throw another interception. I'm already through three. So for the Eagles, they keep on rolling 10 and 0 now to start the year. And now they'll have a few extra days here before they face the Giants next week. Meanwhile, for the Colts, they've fallen out of things now as they sink to 3 and 8. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to Houston to take on the Texans. Yeah, the Giants up next. Got to get your game together before the Giants. Najee Harris puts on power. I wonder if my rating came out. Still hitting. What about the strong safety? Did his come out? Oh, he came out as an X Factor. Yo. Let's go. When selfless players are making plays, their teammates are motivated to perform better. When they enter the zone, all on field teammates enter the zone as well. Damn. Then you got defenders with disability are really fake are rarely faked out by ball cover moves and cannot be faked out when user controlled. Dang, you see this, my man, and grew to an X level, X factor linebacker back there. Then we got Garner over here. He's a superstar. Oh no, he's hidden. He's still hidden. We waiting to see who, what he is. I thought he was a superstar. Oh, no, that's the, is that the guy we picked up? Oh, I think it's a defensive tackle. Defensive tackle hidden too. We got a good amount of guys that's hidden. He still he probably, he getting up there though. He had an eighty, so he doing the thing. Uh, let's see. And so next week. How did I know? How did I know we was going to get a breakout message during the Giants game? We ain't got no messages during, but we're going to get a breakout message right now. Let me get it. Let me get one second. I got to run to the restroom. One second.
how did I know they was going to, I was saying to myself, I was like, I ain't seen a breakout message in a while now. I'm thinking to myself, like, watch they probably saving it to like a rivalry game. Be like, yeah, hold them to 100 points. Got Shaquan Barkley and he'd be like, hold them to 150 rushing points or something like that. So let me get my phone ready to take a picture of this. Maybe I can reference it on field. Let's see whose it is. It might be me because I'm only one or two plays away from breaking out. So let's see. Just wanted to say I really appreciate you involving me in the game plan last week. It gets boring out there just running routes and never seeing the ball. You know, keep throwing in my way. I truly believe I have the potential to be one of the best players on the team. I need this opportunity, and I'll, all I need is opportunity to prove it. Get Juju Smith-Schuster three touchdowns or yards rushing. Okay, if we could get him up to a superstar. Okay. This is what we're going to do to get Juju Smith-Schuster uh, three touchdowns. We're going to work. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to <clears throat> lengthen the game. Something I was not really thinking about. One of the reasons why the X factors, one of the reasons why the X factors would not be working is because basically the game is set to six minutes. So I'm just going to set it to 10 minutes so that we have an opportunity to get at least three touchdowns in the game. Yeah, I got the water. Hold on. And then also, to help him out even further, we're going to bring him up the ladder. We're going to bring him up to number two today. Waddle, just is just one game, Waddle. Need him to get, you know, that way he can get his superstar status as well. Andrew Dillard goes back. And Kyle Juszczyk is back. I didn't know Kyle was down. He must have got hurt in practice or something like that. One in practice injury injuries. Okay, we're in week 12. Get 13 staff points. Hold those on next game. Let's see if there's any upgrades. I didn't play well. I got to have a big game. This is where you got it. I said, I know I said it last time, but I got to take better throws and come up with a better game. It relies on me to get Juju his uh, upgrade. I don't want to change playbooks. I don't think it's the playbook. I think it's just the way I was going at the routes, like the timing. So we have Stefan Gilmore, superstar X-Factor cornerback. They got Shaquan Barkley, superstar X-Factor halfback. We got the best defensive tackle in the game, superstar X-Factor Fletcher Cox. We have Levante David, superstar X-Factor middle linebacker. Jamal Daniels, superstar, strong, superstar X-Factor strong safety on our end. J.J. Wood, superstar X-Factor cornerback, quarterback on their end. Oh, look at that. We'll come back up here and read his stats after this one. Brandon Brooks, superstar right guard. Miles Jack, superstar middle linebacker. Casey Haber Jr., superstar cornerback. Jason Kelsey, superstar center. Darius Slay Jr., su Darius Big Play Slay Jr., superstar cornerback. Jameis Bradbury, the fifth, the sixth, superstar cornerback. Lane Johnson, superstar. Lane Page to Lane Johnson, superstar right tackle. Josh Allen, superstar right outside linebacker. They have Kenny Galladay, superstar wide receiver. We have Shaq Thompson, superstar right outside linebacker. Najee Harris, superstar halfback. Devontae Smith, the Slim Reaper, superstar wide receiver. Jack Fox, superstar punter. Jalen Waddle, superstar wide receiver. And Penny Sewell, superstar right tackle. So they have an X Factor quarterback, huh? First one free, high fake out route on juke, spin, or hurdle, okay. Higher chance of success on pump fakes and double fakes. Pocket dead eye, perfect pass accuracy while throwing from the pocket. Okay, so he going to be a problem. I mean, not a, not a huge problem, but a problem. All he got to do is rush for 10 yards, slight of hand passes his ability. Well, pump faking and double. All right, all right. 
What are we? We're at 86 there, 80. Okay. It's a 10 minute experience, too. I put it on for 10 minutes. So we're going, it's going to be a rivalry game for a minute in this one. Just an extra couple minutes. Now we got to defend home. Back in 2003, have a look at the link. Lincoln Financial Field, where 70,000 are rocking and ready to go in Philadelphia. Just a short time ago, these Philly fans in full roar as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. Pyrotechnics ablaze. They're set to go as their Eagles will match up with the New York Giants. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Eagles team as they interplay here. The streak continues, doesn't it? They come in a perfect 10-0. And, and it's not just that they're winning, it's how they're winning. All phases of the game coming together for this team. On the other side of the field for the visiting Giants, they come in off the extended break from the bye. I think it was much needed as well. You play two, two and a half months, you're ready for some time off to get set for the home stretch. They had me on race for MVP. Then I started throwing NOs and stuff like that. And they got Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin, the coach now. That's looking like now with all the interceptions. 34 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. And what a performance in his last game. A couple of touchdown passes. That was positive. But more than two interceptions. Yeah, that's not what he's looking for. What did Vince Lombardi say, though? Winning isn't everything. It's the only thing. And that's what he hangs his hat on after last week's game. Mm -hmm. Good run. Run. That's one.
Cue it up. Let him hear it. Punter got him. Punter got him. All right, so this quarterback got some good touchdowns. Is that 20, 2,400 yards, 20 touchdowns, four, four interceptions? He's spreading it out from the rip. Good defense. They brought the blitz. Excellent pursuit, 
forced the quarterback out of the pocket. He ends up trying to run for it. Instead, he goes out of bounds and loses yardage. That goes down as a sack for the defense. Second and three. Ballooning the pressure right. That's what I'm talking about. One short, Juju, one short. You gotta make sure you just hold it in there. Survive the early storm. Relax. And now, of course, all scores. His feet was in, Raph. His feet was in. Stop trying to rob him. His feet was in. Let me see. And taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Crew able to connect on the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to 0. The kickoff team on the field now as they send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. Now a hit and a loose football. We'll take that. So they will set up shot. Excellent field position in the red zone at the 19 yard line. So problems compounding themselves here on the return. They just give up the touchdown, and now they lose the football. Yeah, partner, things are starting to unravel a little bit for them right in front of our eyes. TJ Edwards with a big hit. Put that in the chat. Here it is. Yep, three plus touchdowns. We'll get him another one when he's open just to make sure. We can go back to playing regular ball instead of looking at just him. Start 21 nothing here in the first as they kick this one away. 
This will be fielded inside the five. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. So the Giants getting the football back here for their second drive. Coming off every player's friend, the open week from last weekend. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Even if you're coming off of a loss as they did, the open week is exactly what you need after you kind of get over it a little bit, right? Rest up the mind, rest up the body. Get pressure. Damn. I saw that they were trying to go deep. Collins is down. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Operating from the gun. Wood. They'll get this complete to Canarius Tony. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. His first catch good for 14 there and a first down. Right, Hargrave. Damn, he has a dislocated shoulder. That's a big hit. If we have any more open spots, I might sign another linebacker just to have some more to work with on the field. Well behind the sticks here with a second and 18. Out of the shotgun, they run with Barker. And a lot of talent on this Eagle defense, and you've seen it on these last two plays, both losses. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for. One of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. Twenty-one, nothing. Our score. 
second quarter as they've got it with a third down and long coming up. Looking to throw. Wood. And this is going to be incomplete. Looks like the second empty possession to start the game. It's certainly not the way you want to start when you come in off of a loss last week. Mm -hmm. Every team talks about starting fast. They're hoping on their next possession it can be a delayed fast start and get them going. A 41-yard punt there with no return. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And a trio of touchdown passes so far. They've got the lead as well. All is good in their football world at this point. And it's so much fun for our colleagues, right? Think about our producer, our director, everyone putting together these shots. Wouldn't you love to be in the truck right now here and call for it? Give me that one, give me that one, give me that one. And we just saw three beautiful touchdown passes. Now he's looking for four. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And the ledger for them so far looks pretty good, doesn't it? It certainly does. Touchdown, touchdown, Ooh. touchdown. Sure he had that guy on him. That. They've got to feel very good about the groove that they're in at this stage of the game. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Oh, Juju. Might have been your fourth there. Come on, go and get this one. They hand this off to Harris. Fights him off. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the line. And this offense continues to be a hot knife through butter. Three drives, three scores, and knocking on the door again on drive number four. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. That's their second, so they'll have one remaining here in this second quarter. We'll be right back. They 
come out with one back and three tight ends. Harris. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown. That's what I'm talking about. His 17th touchdown now in the season. And the Eagles continue to pull away here in this first half. So the toss play effective even down here near the goal line. Yeah, and you're hoping the defense can miss too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon, and this time he had the speed to win that race. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. It's good, and they stretch their lead to 28 nothing now. So that's the 12 uh, tonight. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Sit on this one. It's a touchback. And now out come the Giants. And they are back down to 500 following the loss last week. Consistency has been a real issue for them so far. Brandon, you almost don't know what team is going to show up every week. I mean, there's no consistency with this ball club at all. And if we feel that way, I know it frustrates the coaching staff. And it also has to frustrate the key leaders in the locker room. They got to attack for hard grade. Into this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Second and 13 from the gun. Wood. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Eagles. Good sack, Hargrave. The football at the 12 yard line. Every week we hear talk about create turnovers, create turnovers. In particular, they wanted to force some fumbles. They got one right there. And it shows you how the game has changed over time. It used to be good enough for a guy to get a sack on the quarterback in the pocket. Now, he comes to the sidelines and he didn't knock the ball free. Your coaches are upset with you. All right? So if you're a quarterback, it starts all the way back in the youth leagues. Take care of the ball. Take care of the ball. Take care of the ball. Because here come the defenders. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. They run with Harris. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Now 34 to nothing with the extra point pending. And Charles, I thought these guys might have the advantage coming in, but I didn't expect this. Well, I'm glad we're going with full transparency here because I didn't either. I thought we might be looking at a 24 to 20 type game, maybe 13 10 at the half. But this has been total, utter domination. Extra point by Coop. Oh, this one's get ugly. I got this thing set for 10 minutes. We'll take that. Kicked off by Stephon Gilmore. And a terrific return as he takes this thing all the way down to the 20-yard line. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted, but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like.
That's just to make sure. chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now the second quarter they're down big already he's struggling as well they've got to find something here he's got to find something on this drive and sometimes you take down all that extra pressure on yourself and maybe you have to disperse it a little bit lean on some other people lean on your teammates Find someone who can take the pressure off and get the ball in their hands for a while. So this, if he doesn't, this is getting out of hand or it could get worse. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. The handoff to Barkley. Room here to run. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 13 yards, good for a giant first down. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second. shakes out now left side on the swing pass they do get a couple but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up the key to any screen play is all in the deception that means everyone on the offensive side of the ball but someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed and the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game they'll set up the screen to Barkley and he got blown up losing yardage on the play back in the 44. fourth down now after a loss of two oh barbara when you see a screen pass and the defensive tackle ends up making the play you know that one wasn't sold well at all because he should be upfield by the time you throw the pass if not you end up with big trouble as we just saw right there here's jk scott now as he's on to punt for new york He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 40 yards on the punt, two on the return. And the Eagles will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and 10. The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive. They've really distanced themselves. They have put the pedal to the metal, I guess, so to speak. So definitely have them in the rearview mirror, don't they? I mean, you're exactly right. Being able to string together these drives that end up in points, it's almost like a run in basketball to create that distance, and they're on a really big time one right yeah, now. It becomes contagious, doesn't it? It absolutely does, because oftentimes it translates to your defense as well, because they're excited about getting the ball back for their offense that's playing so well. Well, they are clicking right now. And now the throw taken in by Sharp. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. And now they're in the hurry up. Back to 
throw now on first down. They'll roll him out right. And Sharp pulls it in. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Let's just call it what it is. This has been a flat-out struggle for this defense all game long. They've really had a hard time slowing them down. And while I'm not big on speeches and guys jumping up and down, they might need their team leader on defense to get in their face right now and light a fire under these guys. They've got to start playing better assignment football and start getting guys on the ground. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They're going to look to throw. Flushed out right. And it's caught on the right side of Smith. And he will reach the 8-yard line before going out. That goes for a gain of 31. When they needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown. I'll take care of that one. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles continue to roll. He continues to show at this level that he can not only pass for touchdowns, he can run for touchdowns. Not the first time we've seen this because this young guy he really makes it happen. So what that tells me is the book on him has to change. You've got to now plan for those legs as well as him throwing the football. Who now for the point after. And the route is on here in this first half. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the capper that put it in the end zone. team on the field now as they will send this one away and not willing to risk another fumble he'll sit on this one it's a touchback here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession he's got to dig deep here doesn't he team's losing he's not playing well either and they always tell you don't press you'll make things a little bit rush coming and he's taken down now we've got a giant player here, slow to get up after that last play. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. They come up on second and long, and the pass protection just has not been there this afternoon. to throw. Wood. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing down here on third down. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. On is the punter Scott here as he gets this one away. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Nearly a huge return as it is. Still a very good one. 24 yards. And the Eagles will have great starting field position here as they take over. Juju Smith-Schuster and the rest of this offense heading back out there. He's the... ...wide receiver, and he's doing his thing so far here into the second quarter. And how you get distinguished as a star is each and every week performing to a high level no matter what they throw at you because you're always wanting to take him out of the game if you're a defensive team. How do you press him, double him, triple him, all those things. But the best players show up each and every week, solid games and some spectacular ones. And he has showed up time and time again. This throw incomplete nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. 
third and short. They'll try and pick it up through the air. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. And oh no, they spike it here. That was fourth down. And now due to apparent time constraints, we fast forward to the beginning of the second half. Thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Giants set to get the football, and they trail here as we get back underway in the second half. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. The Giants about set to go to begin this third quarter. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. They got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find some eagle pressure too much. That'd be another sack. Fletcher Cox in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. There's just not much a quarterback can do there, CD. The pressure was in his face almost instantaneously. Led to a very quick sack. And this came from the interior of the defensive line. And these guys, they're normally anchors of that spot. And they don't often get clear shots at the quarterback. But in this case, he got past the center and the guard in no time and got there to make the play. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Operating from the gun, Wood. And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, no, they'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion here. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. So here are the Eagles to take over. They've got the lead yet again in this ball game with their winning streak right now sitting at 10. Rolling to his... And he can't find a receiver and he's brought down. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Looking to throw. Steps away to his left. That one complete. He finds Sharp. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. They get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And that is incomplete. When you look at the scoreboard, you'd think they'd be pretty comfortable right now with this lead, but these guys are absolutely not going to let up. They want to increase their lead, and they want to do it with a big play. Unable to connect in that attempt. And here now the punter, Fox, as he sends this one away. It's a 46-yard punt, two on the return. And it'll be giant football first and ten. New York ready to go again offensively. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. To throw is Wood. To throw on second down. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. So one quick easy analysis about why they struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. This one goes out wide for Barkley. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of first. A big pickup of 13. 
15, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. to kick for the sixth time today. Waddle now to return it. Call it an even 40-yard punt. 7-0 on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Philadelphia's offense ready to give us another look. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer. Create space for our runners. And those oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the Michigan man, Jabril Peppers. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Giants touchdown. And maybe a small measure of revenge for this defense, but they've been thoroughly dominated so far. But a brief right spot there with that pick six. Seemingly coming up for air after being dominated, as you described. They get a nice play there. Probably not going to change the balance of this game, but they have to feel a little bit better about themselves after that one. Taking it about the one. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. And he can't get away from the pressure. The Giants get there. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Sliding out of the pocket. Now he's going to throw deep right side. And that nearly intercepted. It's incomplete. Now remember, he had a pick earlier, but couldn't reel that one in. They'll drop the throw. And he's taken down. Back in his own seven. Dexter Lawrence in there to record another sack. And that is now six on the afternoon for this defensive unit. So from their own end zone here, this kicks away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. The possession switching back to the New York Giants. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Well, the passing windows are just not there. And that's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. Throwing deep for Galladay. And he's got it. What a catch on the sideline. We saw this plenty last year in college. He loved to take his shots downfield, and that throw, that was a thing to behold there. Wood on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. That one good for 10 yards, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. a gain of a yard, but it's going to set him up with a first and goal. Barkley. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. times 
in this game and have not scored a single point. Can they break through here on second and goal? Here's a give to Barkley. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Well, they certainly haven't been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defense. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. That's right, defense. Just outside the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. They were coming off the extra week of rest, but this team started sluggish, and it really didn't get any better from there. And trailing big here in this fourth quarter. Wood on 
first and ten. He dumps it off to Barkley. They'll contain him to just four, second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Pressure comes and down he goes. Cox with another set. Wow, this dude is their rookie that they draft in the draft. It turns out to be an X Factor. They drafted well last year. Yeah. Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. The Giants on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This will be a tough third and 18. Looking to throw. Wood. Wow, well, had his hands on it. Couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. Here's J.K. Scott now. The drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. So a good punt, but a solid 12-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And Charles, we are in the midst of a very one-sided affair. I think this is where you and I <laughs> have to fill a little bit. You want to regale us with old stories of your childhood in New Paltz, New York? <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to hear that, but this is a perfect time for us to start listing MVP candidates, right? The best teams we've seen so far this year, the best games that we've called thus far, how we anticipate the season unfolding. It can go in so many different directions. <laughs> Does the game circle back to it? Clicking off right now. They'll look to throw here on first down. Flush to his right. And he gets it down to the 32. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Blitz coming and down he goes. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. A play-action fake. They'll look to throw. Gets this one to use check. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. It's a gain of nine yards, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike. But that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here? You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. It's a quarterback sneak. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. They only needed a few inches, and they didn't get much more than that. But by about the width of a shoelace, they convert on fourth down. Two now. Here's first and ten. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. And they're going to speed things up here. Again, it's Harris on second down. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. So from inside the 20, here's first and ten at the 18. He'll buy some time right. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. They're still throwing the football here, and obviously the incompletion stops the clock. That's a bad thing. Feels to me like they're just keeping them honest on defense because you know they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and try and stop any type of a running play. Short little passes may work in exchange of running plays. Keep the clock moving, keep them moving. Yeah, I guess you're right. If they can get some first downs, just as good as running the football. fourth and that personal foul penalty is not going to help no in these types of situations players will tell you that's extra intensity from where we sit it's actually frustration not a good play now back to throw touchdown eagles Dallas with touchdown number eight on the year and the eagles have 11-0 in their sight 
points as they add on to their lead. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And they'll tell the ownership that as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. I just got my 40th pass and touchdown for the season. Target here, Darius Slayton. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. First target, first catch, and a first down. From the gun, Wood. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And this is intercepted, but they'll say out of bounds. Oh, very close to a turnover there in the end zone. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Eagle pressure, too much this time. Down he goes. Josh Allen make that now eight sacks for him on the season. And that takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side. Josh Allen with another sack. Javon Hargrave with the sack. Chance for Waddle on the return. 51 yards on the punt there. Go, go. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And it's all but certain that this win streak is going to extend another week. Just another tremendous performance in this one. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Looking here for Smith downfield. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Here's second and ten. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Just two minutes. 
minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. He'll look to throw, eluding the pressure right. He's got a first down past the 30, and he's going to get this to the 40-yard line. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. On the give, this is Harris. They find some open field here. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Now we've got a giant player here, slow to get up after that last play. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now it looks like he'll throw here. Flushed out right. This is Smith to the ground. And he will get into the end zone. Smith with the TD. You know, the Slim Reaper. This one away, and off it goes. Taken in at the three. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. You're gonna forget today. Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo. Exactly. Going Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal, and never forget it because you're not gonna want that feeling. No, you don't want that feeling again. And who knows? You may meet up with this team again. They tried the third and second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Back to throw. One. And Ingram holds it in. And he will have a Giants first down, and comfortably so as he gets five there on third and a yard. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. Control on second down. Wood. Open man right side is Ingram. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. Wood now from the gun on third down. And he'll find Galladay. That's complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's the, and that's the win. <laughs>
So for Philadelphia, the perfect season remains intact as they move to 11-0 on the year. And they'll get to stay home again next week as Washington comes to town. Meanwhile, for the Giants, it's starting to look like it won't be their year as they drop to 5-6. And, and they'll have a chance at redemption next week at home against the Indianapolis Colts. All right, that was my last game. Threw seven touchdowns in that game. You know, did the daggone thing. Jordan my lot against an upgrade, but this on power. Okay. View the breakout message. What did I tell you, coach? I said I was one of the best players on the team, and I think I proved it out there today. Keep heating your ball. Juju Smith-Schuster is now a superstar. That's good. Have another superstar wide receiver on the team. That's good. So now we come over to the wide receivers. Go superstar, superstar, superstar. Top three, super, three superstar wide receivers. Now when they contracts coming around, they gonna want superstar money too. But we did get that win. Um, let's move forward in this week just to see if there's any breakout. Well, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna move forward in the season because then if there's any breakout messages I won't remember maybe going into this next game and we got Washington next so I want to thank everybody for coming in today let me put it in the chat I want to thank everybody for coming in and supporting the stream. Anybody that watches back on playback, thank you for supporting. While you're watching, make sure to drop a like. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Set alerts so you get notified whenever I go live, which is often. Just to run down the tabs to let you know, on Facebook on Facebook itself, you can go to www.facebook.com slash sr51m. That's going to be SR51M. That's our Facebook page there. Take you directly there. You can see different information about us, pages that we're running over there, stuff like that. Directly below that, of course, is the YouTube channel slash SR51 Media on YouTube. Make sure to like, subscribe, set alerts as normal. Below that is SR51 Media brand channel. I mean, excuse me, brand website. So that's www.sr51media.com where there's over 100 hours of gameplay and much more content to come. Below that is a new platform we're on as well, www.theta.tv slash sr51media. If you want to just type that in for me there, drop a heart over there. That'd be greatly appreciated. Trying to build my community over there as well. And I am sr51media on Twitter also. If you want to be updated on streams or really anything else, gaming and sports and different things like that. So I want to thank everybody support for supporting the content. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting. Thank you for watching on Playback. See you on the social spaces. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.